we have light snowfall it's uh, 14 degrees right now um, 9 30 a.m roughly earlier this morning at about 7 a.m it was 7 degrees out and uh, so i thought i'll come out here and we'll just check out the bolt real quick how it's doing in this cold weather without preheating whatsoever bolt's been sitting there for four days now it is plugged into a level two charger so you can uh, heat the battery as needed whatever it needs to do but i didn't preheat it at all so we're just gonna go get in there i'm gonna plug in the obd reader we'll get the stats and go for a little drive so i'm in here now Chose 124 miles at 75%. We're using about 6 kilowatts according to this here. Right now, we're no longer plugged in. Over here, we can see there's about 94% climate and 6% driving and accessories. So we're just sitting, so we're obviously not driving. It's just the accessories using 6%. 94% is for the heater. Since we fired up, we already used 0.4 kilowatt hours, basically just for heat right now. So it is a little chilly out. It shows 18 degrees up here. Uh, when I left the house, the weather station showed 14 degrees. So actual temperature out there is probably more likely 14, but wherever this sensor sits, it will get some leftover heat from this uh, car here as the car keeps the battery somewhat warm we have an average temperature of 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit on the battery ambient air temperature 17.6 that's the readout from the car that's why it shows 18 there and the battery coolant shows extremely low right now only 19.4 degrees that's very unusual cabin heat is taken well just dropped here to 6700 watts so it's warming up in here a little bit and the state of charge here we're showing 73.3 the chevy only does five percent blocks so until we drop down to 70.1 and then it needs to drop to point 0.1 then it will drop to 70. so i'm gonna start driving and we can look at those stats a little more as we're going here along on this snow covered road here going about 30 miles per hour uh, we're using roughly 10 kilowatts that's what it's showing here on the display now going uphill it goes up to about 30 kilowatts so this is quite a bit more energy going uphill the heater is still going full blast cabin heat on the OBD reader still shows 7500 watts and on the dash here it shows a tendency to have less miles than predicted on average so there is a an indicator on the dash that actually tells you if you're more likely to go towards the max or the min and currently that bar is moving down towards minimum it's already halfway down there so and that's mainly because we're using the heat full blast at this point but it drives just fine no issues now we're going downhill here i'm gonna speed up a little bit and then we'll 
see what regen does, see how good of traction we have. So I'm releasing, releasing the accelerated pedal, we get 46 kilowatts of regen. And now it's slowing down, still 30. So it's giving me full blast regen. Also, there is no issue with sliding and slipping. Obviously, there is some gravel on the road. And we do have snow tires on this car. We have the Bridgestone Plesak on here. This is one of the two tires that I'm familiar with and very much like for when I'm driving. The other one is the Michelin X-Ice. I'm familiar with both tires, ran it on several different cars and they perform great in snow conditions and ice conditions. I mean, winter time is easy breezy with any of those two tires. So the dash currently shows me 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour average, which is a little low, but again, the heat's still going full blast. It's still showing me 7,500 watts for the cabin heater. Get into the hill a little bit. I'm accelerating here, I'm speeding up to 50 miles an hour. We're using 60, almost 60 kilowatts. It was at 59. Now it's dropping down again. Gotta release the accelerator here. Go reach in 20 kilowatts, no problem. So now it's showing 70% on the dash. We are at 69.4 according to the OBD. So at 65%, it will drop to 65 as we're already going below 65. So it always shows you an actual, pretty much a higher percentage than what you have. Generation 50, 51 kilowatts right there, no problem. Looking at the energy display on the, the center screen, we have now used 3.6 kilowatt hours. And we traveled 5.9 miles. We are about almost 50-50 between driving and climate settings. It's 48% used for climate settings, so the heater is still going. Still going full blast, still 7,500 watts according to the OBD reader. So it shows me battery pump speed is 50 rpm so the coolant pump is going the battery average temperature is still in the 30s 35.6 degrees which is still pretty cold i would have assumed that the battery heater would kick in because normally it kicks in right away when you enter the car but today when I got in the car it actually did not come on not sure what's going on there uh, battery coolant still shows 21.2 degrees so battery coolant is below freezing it's obviously not frozen since it's a coolant and not just water but I would have assumed by now that the battery heater should have kicked in 
to warm that battery pack up. We're doing pretty good with power and regen, so there's really no restriction there. That's a little unusual with those cold temperatures. Now that we're going a little faster, it's funny we have tendency showing here to reach more the average mileage again rather than the minimum that line is getting shorter coming closer up to the average because we're going faster we get more miles in the same amount of time um, than we did before and that increases the tendency to get more miles the, the main factor here is the heater the heater is using 7500 watts still it's still going full blast and so if you go slow with the heater on high that means you will get less miles out of this battery pack if you're going faster then you can actually uh, increase the miles that you will get and the big thing here is just the heat so currently if I would turn the heater down a little I could do much better But since it's still, it's showing 19 degrees out here, um, since it's still that cold, I'd rather keep the heat going. <laughs> still, the battery heater is not on. Battery temp average is still 35.6, and that's Fahrenheit, so it's cold. get on to the interstate here uh, let's see it accelerates just fine on the 39 kilowatts we're already on set 70, so... Let's get past the truck here. Here in Montana, the speed limit is 80 set here at 82 and now that tendency indicator is rapidly going down to the minimum miles as we're speeding up we're using uh, 38 39 40 kilowatts that's where it is right now so the ring around the speedometer turned yellow indicating that we're using a lot of power and our efficiency is much lower now cabin heat shows 4500 watts oh, just jumped back up to 62 so it's kind of going up and down Showing battery state of charge 61.6. The display on the dash still shows 65. The battery temperature finally came up just a bit. We're at 37.4 degrees now. Battery cooler shows 23 degrees. Like I said, I'm not sure why the heater did not come on today. Usually you can hear it come on right away as soon as you get in the car.
Okay, battery stats here. We got 60.4. It is still showing 65 on the dash. indicators shows us basically 5% more than we really have at this point. Okay, there it dropped. The bar went away. The bar now shows 60 and uh, looking on the OBD here it reads 59.6. So right now we're correct. We're basically 60%. But, like I said, we will use the 5% before it actually drops the bar. So now that we're driving faster and actually using continuously uh, a lot of power, so we're, right now it came up to 50 kilowatts. So we're using 40 to 50 kilowatts continuous here. That the use of power will warm up the battery. Charging or discharging the battery will warm it up. And so the battery now is up to 39.2 degrees. The battery coolant is at 24.8 degrees. coolant pump is still going so a full reach and 53 kilowatts that's the max I believe we can get out of this that's the max the battery will accept even on the DC fast charger that's usually where it's at the 53 so We have used 13.8 kilowatt hours or at 29.2 miles. The average is 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which is not very high. But we started out with everything cold, the car not preheated. So the average miles per kilowatt hour will be low like that. So it's very important that in cold weather, if you're plugged in, preheat your car so that you get more miles out of your battery pack. It shows now 81 miles average prediction here. We started at over 120 miles. We only drove 31 miles, so 10 miles basically went somewhere by the wayside. We lost that due to the high speed on the interstate and cabin heat. Cabin heat, the big one. So, again, if you live in a cold weather place like we do, it's just best to preheat the car. Um, this way you keep your state of charge up in the battery and when you get in the car it's already comfortable it's already nice and warm inside the car and you don't have to wear hat and gloves and freeze until it warms up in a few minutes so it's always best to preheat in uh, cold climates can certainly also preheat the car when you're not plugged in it will just use the power from your battery and you will have less miles available because your state of charge will be a little lower but still preheating the car will make it nice and comfortable for you to get in and with the electric car you can do this even in an enclosed garage with a gas car I would recommend you don't unless you're suicidal 
because obviously the exhaust of a gas car will kill you. But with an electric car, there is no exhaust, so you can preheat it in an enclosed garage, no problem. Anywhere, in any space, nobody will even really know this, that you're preheating the car. All there is on the Chevy Bolt is that the, the lights are on, the marker lights are on, and there will be a little sound from like a, a coolant pump, that's it. So, no big deal makes it really comfy. We are back on the dirt road or it looks like dirt right now but it's actually snow and ice covered but they put gravel down over it in places so that there's some more traction and that makes it look like pure dirt but it's mostly snow and ice covered. So we're about to be back home drove 40.4 miles, used 17.7 .7 kilowatt hours, 25% uh, of the energy during this whole drive was used for heating. So again, heating takes up a lot. It's one fourth that it took up for this drive. So I can't stress enough, preheat your car while you're plugged in so you get more range. That is a big range gain in the winter time. You can do the same thing in the summertime. You can use the AC and precondition the car and cool it down before you leave and save some too. But heat is even worse than air conditioning. It shows 50% on the dash state of charge and uh, we are actually at 45.9 percent so again basically the display is five percent off at this point which i'm not a big fan of this display here it should be more accurate now it just dropped to 45 on the dash and it reads out 45.1 so it actually dropped a little early right now but still um, yeah it's not very accurate battery coolant still only shows 32 degrees battery heater never came on. It's a little odd. Battery temperature shows 39.2 degrees. So not very warm but there was no issues whatsoever with the functions of the car, with driving the car or anything. And this car's been sitting for four days here. It's been plugged in but we haven't been driving it. And if you let a car, a gas car sit for four days in these cold temperatures, guess what? You will have a hard time getting it started. It will take quite a bit more to get it started. This electric car you just get in and you start driving. Not an issue. And preheating a gas car in these cold temperatures by idling it, first of all, pollutes the environment, wastes a lot of gas. In idle, you get zero miles per gallon, so it's a huge waste. And so you should not idle a gas car because it's hard on the engine. It overfuels just to keep it running it has to put extra fuel in because a lot of the fuel will condensate right away as it's injected and so it needs to squirt a lot of extra fuel in there really bad so not a good thing to do with an electric car you don't have to worry about that whatsoever you can just get in and drive and you can preheat it anywhere you want to 
All right, we're back. Let me get the camera down here so I can show you uh, the dash and the OBD reader. Okay, let's look here. So we used 18.3 kilowatt hours, drove 41.6 miles. And you can see 25% was used for climate settings. So one fourth of the 18.3 kilowatt hours was just used for heating the cabin. We're at 20 degrees outside temp according to this and this whole drive took about an hour. Um, I had the temperature set in here to 70 with the fan initially at about 7 and now I came down to 4 just to warm it up in here. Still got the seat heater going. I turned the steering wheel heat off at some point but it took quite a while to warm it up since it was pretty cold. There we're showing 74 miles average. We drove 41 so that would make about 105 miles. It initially told us we can go 121 or 124 miles so over 120 miles so we lost quite a few miles and that is mainly due to heat so again preheat while you're plugged in um, it shows average I hope you can see this here 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour which is very low but this is not unusual if you drive an electric car in a cold climate when the electric car is basically cold soaked over four days without doing anything without being driven and then you don't preheat that's about what you need to expect by the way the distance on the dash here shows 40.1 um, while over here we show 41.6 that's because I didn't reset the dash until about a mile into the drive so let's look at the stats on the OBD. Battery temperature, we came up to 39.2. Ambient temperature is 19.4, showing 20 on the display in the car. Battery coolant finally made it to freezing point. We came up to 32 degrees. Cabin heat still going at 1300 watts right now and state of charge is 44.7 and the display on the dash is actually showing 45 so this was just to show that you can use an electric car in the cold without any issues actually you have less issues with an electric car than you would with a gas car because this just starts up and goes it has no issue trying to start I experienced even a gas car in uh, it was colder and it was sitting over the weekend and it would not start anymore on Monday morning to go to work because it was so cold and it wasn't plugged in so you have to plug in gas cars or diesel cars or trucks as well in cold temperatures. They have a block heater to keep the coolant and the engine block warm so you can actually start it in cold temperatures. And if you read manuals, most manufacturers actually tell you to plug in once the temperatures fall below the freezing point. They will still start below the freezing point usually. But in temperatures like we had, where we had this morning 7 degrees, uh, a few years ago when I had a gas car, it was plugged in. And so was my diesel truck when I needed it. So they plug in. They use power, electricity, just for sitting there. So why not have an electric car, plug it in. If it uses a little bit of power, fine. It may not use any and then you can preheat it while you're plugged in you get a nice warm car to go in and you get going right away without any issues so i think uh, even though the range is 
much lower in cold temperatures it still is way above and beyond the gas car for com comfort you can get in and drive it's preheated it, it just works there's really not an issue and mostly like for a, our daily drive we would do a 60 mile round trip I had over 120 miles showing let's say in the worst case I would use one-fourth of that because of battery because of heating the car just like we have today if I use one-fourth of that I still got plenty to make my 60 mile round trip it's really not a big deal also there is possibly other options to plug in if you're coming close to using everything uh, you can plug in at a friend's house at work maybe there's a DC fast charger maybe there's a level 2 charger at a grocery store or at a restaurant or wherever you're going there's so many options so I think these electric cars are at this point at least as good as gas cars it, it's really not an issue to have an electric car there's no excuse for somebody not to have an electric car I think the only excuse may be that they're still quite expensive if you want to go for a model that has a higher range but for your daily drivers there's a lot of them available uh, used that are in great condition almost new for just around 10 to 15 thousand dollars just a couple years old there's many Nissan Leafs out there Fiat 500s Kia Souls they're super cheap for some reason they lose a lot of value don't know why they're still brand new they still work great they're a couple years old have low miles no reason not to buy an electric car no excuse winter cold definitely no excuse this stuff works great and it only keeps getting better so again our Chevy Bolt performed great no regrets whatsoever we're having two electric cars right now we are waiting on the Cybertruck from Tesla we have a reservation in for it so that we can replace our diesel truck that we have or at least use it very minimally because the diesel truck that we have is a one-ton dually so it has higher capacities than the Cybertruck will have but also it's it's older and uh, so we might keep it just to as a beater around the farm here around the ranch but definitely we're waiting on the electric truck because it's so much nicer to drive electric than any other gas or diesel car or truck so I hope you like this video and give us a thumbs up please share this video if you know somebody else that may be interested in seeing this please leave a comment down below let us know if you have an EV and what you're experiencing with it in the cold let us know if you're if you have any questions about purchasing an EV in regards to the cold or anything else I will answer the questions to the best of my knowledge so again please like share and most importantly subscribe to our channel we have many other things many other videos about our ranch about the animals about other equipment we test certain products that we purchase lots of stuff to see not just EVs so please subscribe to our channel thank you for watching goodbye